I hope you have some coffee or tea because we are going to paint our next painting in watercolour a beautiful snow globe that you can use as a Christmas card or as a gift tag and this December I focused a lot on the Christmas cards because obviously it is Christmas but these little tags you can also use for normal birthday cards I would prefer to put an eyelet in here um, one of those little eyelets that you get that you use in scrapbooking um, I would prefer to put one in my punch wasn't the best for that and then this is another little Christmas card that I made just for fun and then uh, this is the next tutorial that I am going to publish which is a snow globe in watercolour I basically used this watercolour brush number 5, cool memory brush and just uh, any blue so the colours are like this blue, you can use any blue lighter blue, you can even make it a little bit more greyer to suggest it's a little bit more dramatic or colder and I just used a little round plate like this to create a circle and then I just drew a little stand so it's not perfect at all I used my um, masking fluid for the little snowflakes that you see there that's falling and I show you how I paint these tiny little trees I also used the Winsor & Newton white ink With you guys brilliant white ink for painting whiskers and as you can see it fades a little bit but it is perfect for this painting that I wanted to paint on this snow globe so this is another one of the Christmas themes that I painted and then I painted this as well mountains and some snow and I used a lot of this Winsor & Newton ink for this scene, I will also again the highly merely called this watercolor paper 21 centimeters by 29, so it's really basically a ruler size, and then just 20 centimeters. There, so it's perfect for this paper, is very reasonable, so you can use it for practice. The supplies I use the Winsor and Newton ink. A Kum memory brush, the number five, some washi tape. I use a little bit of blue mixed with paints gray and a very dark green color for the trees. I also used my masking fluid with an old brush, and then I just rinsed the brush immediately after I used it because of the glue. You don't want it to ruin your brush. And then I used a little round plate for the circle of the snow globe. A quick little stand and you can go all out and create this beautiful fancy stand I just created a plain stand for my snow globe I had quite a few cards to paint so I didn't go into too much detail just a quick dog stand And then just a beautiful inside, I'm not going to go in with too much detail on the inside, I'm not going to paint the trees yet because I am going to paint it in by hand, so I'm not going to draw them at all. This is the masking fluid that I used, the old brush. I want to create a highlight on the right hand side. In certain parts I added the or painted the masking fluid on too thick. And they do come off with your brush too quickly if you have it too thick like you'll see certain spots are very high off the paper so you do want enough of it to so it's easier to remove the masking fluid but you don't want too much so that it lifts off with your brush and then you just let it dry completely this is my very colorful palette that I have so I want to just mix a few colors i also used a little bit of the burnt sienna for the bottom of the 
stand just want to mix the blue gray paints gray mixture and that's the brown that I will use I didn't press the record button for this stand but I basically just mixed a little bit of the paints gray and the burnt sienna and then I just remove a little bit of the paint I will let it dry and then I will come back later with a darker mixture I want to wet the paper now in the globe it's a little bit of water that ran out onto the paper and if you put any pigment on there it will run outside of that globe and I don't want any paint outside of the globe and I will wet the paper I want quite a lot of paint on my brush and you'll notice that the the water there's quite a lot of water on the top part of this globe as well and there's a reason for it i want it to look like there's clouds and there's snow and it's just a beautiful cloudy snowy day that we are painting in the snow globe so the water is quite thick on the top but then at the bottom i don't want any puddles so it's just a soft sheen on the paper and because the paper is wet the trees will be very fuzzy and they will not be um, too defined yet so as soon as I let the paper dry and I go over it again with a thicker consistency the trees will be slightly more defined but I want the trees to look very fuzzy in the background my tongue is not in here <laughs> anyway so this is how I create those tiny little trees again just a very close up for you I hold the camera in my hand so that I can zoom in very close to the paper so that I can show you exactly how I paint those little trees now the stand is dry and I go in with a little bit of a darker consistency I might go in with a little bit more black or a blue color at a later stage but for now we'll just stick with this color and I will let it dry completely So certain parts will be dark, certain parts will be light. I want to be very careful around the globe. I don't want my brush to go into that section. I am clumsy sometimes and I might just mess. So I would be very careful around the, the globe there. Now I just want to create a dark a little section for the ground or the snow. So I mix the Payne's Grey Blue mixture, very watery don't want to go in too light now the paper is dry at this stage and I have a thicker consistency on my brush but it's still the same color as the other trees now to make it more dramatic you can go in with a black color to make it more like a dark cold snowy day but I want more of a warmer sunny day a snowy sunny day with snow with lots of snow on the treetops so I'll just darken each section so I go in with a thicker consistency all the time my water on the paper is now dry completely I have pigment on my brush with water that's the only water that I have anywhere on this globe at the moment and if I notice the tree is not defined enough, I just go back over with a thicker consistency and more little dabs on the paper to create the tree. I want to leave a few little highlighted sections in between the branches too. And this is what I do with a brush. So I just dab it on the paper. This is how I paint my tiny little Christmas trees. You can go in a little bit more defined and just create a real Christmas tree if you want this to be a little bit more defined than this that I'm painting here. But for this I want just to create these little tiny little trees this way with tiny little branches, not too much detail. We have quite a few to paint. 
you can use it also as a Christmas card or as a tag. And now I went a bit more darker blue, especially on the top and in between. So I want to make sure that the trees are quite dry. I don't want all of the color to mix too much. I definitely want it a bit darker and a little bit more dramatic. And then I will move it around. A little bit. So I also want to create that shape, the rounded shape of the globe. And then I go back with a little bit more clean water on my brush and I move and soften some of those little darker sections. They left out certain parts. I just go in between because if you touch the green now, you will mess this up. Even if they are dry. We don't want that right now. So I'll just leave a little white, white spots around the trees. It also creates like a snowy effect which we're going to create now with the uh, ink that we're going to paint in on the tree tops. So I love the effect that the white um, created around the trees. And then I just go in with a little bit more of a blue black, a little bit more paint gray. I want a nice tip. Now I want to define the trees a little bit more, a very thick consistency of green. Now if you don't have a very dark green, if you have Payne's Grey or any colour that's similar to this green, try and get as close to a Christmassy tree colour as best as you can. And then if you don't, you have Payne's Grey or, um, and a little bit of sap green, you can mix a darker green for your trees which will be perfect. Or you can use, create your own green with yellow and blue play around with your colors. Tiny little trees in the front, a few in the back, so the paper is still wet, create again a very fussy, fuzzy, fuzzy look. And some of the grey is running into the globe, so I just take my tissue and I remove it all the time. Now I'm going to remove the masking fluid, I use my fingers, I lift it up and you will feel the sticky glue like uh, feeling under your fingers if you rub it over your painting but make sure your painting is completely dry before you remove this because you will ruin your beautiful painting if it's still wet. That one section was a little bit wet so I just left it to dry and I will go back later to remove most of it again. I just want to darken again underneath the globe. This is now dry. Some parts are a bit harder to remove. And you see it's like sticky glue that comes off. use a brush I don't want to use my hands or over my painting so when I feel if there's any of the masking fluid left on the paper now I maybe could have um, painted in a little bit more masking fluid but I am going to use the ink so you are welcome to use a little bit more masking fluid all over your painting if you want to create a lot more snowflakes. All up to you. I want to darken underneath this globe. The stand must be slightly darker. I'm not going to put the dark color all over the place. I just want to paint it in certain spots. We again creating a very loose watercolor painting here. So we don't want it to be perfect because you might as well just buy a Christmas card. This must look like it is a Christmas card that you painted. Handmade, homemade. <laughs> this will be a lovely gift for someone special. 
and I added a little bit of the ink on the plate and I used the tip of my brush, the spur brush. I will have to get a new one because I use this brush so much. And I just used the tip to dab it all over the paper to create these beautiful little markings like snow. Oh gosh, it looks beautiful. Now, if you want to, and if you love gold, you can put a few little gold drops in there. You can create a much darker sky and paint the moon in. There's so many options that you can use for this uh, snow globe. You can also paint a little house inside. You can paint a little snowman. Whatever you want to paint in your snow globe, you can. And then I thought I will just share our beautiful Christmas decorations. Very fast video, I'm very sorry. It's a, <laughs> a bit fast, but um, this is our Christmas tree. And some of these little decorations are as old as me. So this is it. And I hope you enjoyed this snow globe in watercolor. See you soon.